So first of all, let's talk about the history of vulnerability disclosure and bug bounty programs. How many of you have heard of a bug bounty program before? Wonderful. Um, and how many are, of you are familiar with vulnerability disclosure? OK, thank God. So quick history, and this is borrowed from my friends over at Bug Crowd, one of my bounty service provider partners. And I'll talk about the differences in some of the bounty service providers that I work with now that I'm independent and talk to people more about building their vuln disclosure capabilities than I do even about talking about building their bug bounty programs. So way back in the mid-90s, Mozilla offered the first bug bounty, which was $500 in exchange for a security vulnerability. And nothing new really came up in the bug bounty world until about 2010, when Google offered their first bug bounty programs. Now, at the time, I was with Microsoft as a security strategist. And they asked me, Katie, if you were to run a bug bounty program here at Microsoft, what would that look like? What shape would it take? It only took three years of study, game theory, business theory, economic theory, in order to come up with a plan that would enact Microsoft's first bug bounty programs, and we'll talk about those in a minute. And then you see this curve of an increase in adoption of these programs. Now, you've often heard about them talked about in the news as if it's this massive new trend and everyone's doing it. And in fact, not everyone is actually doing it. And I'll even go further and say that not everyone should do it. Not everyone's ready. So we're going to talk about some of the capabilities you need as a basis to handle vulnerabilities, whether you find them yourself or they're reported to you from the outside. So vuln disclosure, to me, is the absolute basis for what we're doing here in terms of defense. All software contains vulnerabilities, and it's an eventuality that someone will find them, and someone will try and report them to you, whether it's your customers, whether it's the government, or whether it's a friendly hacker. Now, don't feel bad if you've never heard of these ISO standards before. They were published in 2014, and they're currently under revision. But essentially, these are guidelines and roadmaps, ISO 29147, ISO 30111, in how to handle vulnerability disclosure and vulnerability remediation within your organization. But 94% of the Forbes 2000 don't have a published way to reach them to report a security vulnerability. So that means only 6% of these organizations, and these are well-heeled organizations, they spend a lot of money on security, and yet they don't have a public method to notify them. So this is an ongoing problem that we have with defense. If we're trying to share information about vulnerabilities with each other, and we don't even have an email address to report them to, this is, a, this is a systemic problem that I think we as defenders can do a lot to address. Now, what's the difference between a vuln disclosure program and a bug bounty program? Quite simply, bug bounty programs are a subset. They are an incentive towards disclosure and nothing more. They are ways in which an organization can shape what it is that they hear about, when they hear about it, and what kinds of vulnerability information they are most interested in hearing about from the wider world. Some organizations choose to offer it on their own and process it on their own. And some will offer, uh, offer these bug bounty programs in concert with a bounty service provider. These organizations like Bug Crowd, Hacker One, Synac, and some others that are growing here in Europe are there to basically outsource parts of this capability in order to make it easier for organizations and governments to handle vulnerability reports. So we've often heard, how many of you have heard that bug bounties may replace penetration testing? Any of you heard that spoken before? Um, that is something that is a common way to think about the return on investment for this crowdsourced security model. However, bug bounties by nature can't really replace penetration testing, especially in scenarios where you've got IoT devices, hardware, things that are much more difficult to crowdsource at scale. So it's a complementary activity. And again, this is a slide that's borrowed from my friends over at Bug Crowd, where they kind of weigh the differences between using bug bounties versus using a traditional penetration test. So I mentioned some of the bounty service providers. And at a glance, they're all similar, and they're converging in their capabilities. But one of the things that I advise my, my customers on is the fact that depending on their organizational goals, 
and how they want their security team to spend their resources, they may or may not want to outsource all or parts of their vulnerability coordination or their bug bounty programs to one of these service providers. So, Bug Crowd's known for being the easy button for triage. That is wonderful if you want a consistent triage experience and have your security team only deal with fully vetted, fully qualified bug submissions. But if you are sensitive about other people knowing about your vulnerabilities before they're fixed, maybe not the best solution for you. HackerOne has the most developed platform, but it's basically for power users on the triage team. Does everybody know what bug triage is? Yes, so essentially it's determining whether or not the bug is actually a security bug, whether or not that bug is actually uh, worthy of a bounty if you're running a bounty program. It's all of those things and kind of deciding the order in which you need to take on that vulnerability. So that's great with the HackerOne platform if you want a platform with automation. However, if you lack the internal talent, or your internal talent doesn't want to sit and do triage, then that's not necessarily the best solution for you. Finally, there's Synac, which I also call adult pen test friend finder, which is uh, essentially closest to the traditional penetra penetration testing model, where they actually have a series of vetted security researchers, and some of them could come with security clearances. So that's the different bounty service providers at a glance.